Hi, my name is Gabriela Diaz, and I'm a Solutions Architect at AWS. And I want to talk to you about how AWS Firewall Manager helps you manage security controls at scale, and more specifically, how to protect resources with Shield Advanced in scenarios where you have multiple AWS accounts and have multiple AWS resources that you want to protect. And this is important because we often hear from our customers that they want a centralized way of managing protected resources across their AWS organizations. Let's first review some important concepts. Our perimeter protection portfolio includes these three services. AWS WAF is a web application firewall that protects your HTTP application against layer seven attacks. And you can use AWS managed rules that are updated periodically and maintained by our threat research team. You can leverage our partner rules or you can build your own custom rules. Shield Advanced is a managed DDoS protection service and it provides protection from layer three to layer seven. It leverages AWS WAF, which we just talked about, to protect our applications against layer seven DDoS attacks. Now, Firewall Manager allows you to centrally manage security policies and helps push out Shield Advanced policies for the resources that need to be protected. Firewall Manager helps you manage other services like AWS Network Firewall, WAF, VPC Security Groups, and Amazon Route 53 Resolver DNS Firewall. Another important thing to mention is that you can integrate Firewall Manager with Security Hub to monitor Shield Advanced protected resources. So for example, when Shield Advanced identifies and detects an anomalous event that matches a DDoS attack pattern and is targeting one of the protected resources in any AWS account within the scope, this will generate a finding that will be visible in the Security Hub console. Now, I want to show you how to use Firewall Manager to protect resources using Shield Advanced in multiple AWS accounts. So let's go to the console. But for configuring Firewall Manager, we need to make sure that we have an AWS organization structure and that we have designated one of our accounts within the organization as an administrator account for Firewall Manager. We also need to enable AWS config in all of the accounts and regions where we have resources that we need to protect. Also, we need to subscribe to Shield Advanced in this delegated admin account. I have already done this, but you can follow the instructions in the Shield console. When we use Firewall Manager, all accounts in the organization will be automatically subscribed to Shield Advanced. Now we're ready to create security policies, but before we create this policy, if you're using Firewall Manager to centralize WAF rules, then it is a best practice to create a Firewall Manager WAF security policy first, and then create the Shield Advanced policy for the resources that you wanna protect. You can check our documentation for best practices on WAF rules for DDoS protection. Okay, having said that, let's now create a Shield Advanced policy for a CloudFront distribution first. Let's go to Security Policies, Create Policy. Since CloudFront is a global service, we are going to select Global in Region, and we're going to select Shield Advanced. We click Next. We give this policy a name, Shield Advanced CloudFront, and we select Enable Automatic Mitigation. After enabling automatic mitigation, a rule group managed by Shield Response Team will be added to a WAF Web ACL already associated with the protected resources. I mentioned earlier that it is a best practice to create the WAF rule first, but if you didn't, this rule group managed by the Shield Response Team will be attached to a web ACL added by this security policy that we are creating. And then it will be associated with the protected resource. The WAF web ACL will also require 150 web ACL capacity units to be available. 
we can choose block or count for the rule action. We will choose to count for the purposes of this demonstration. You can later update the policy and switch action from count to block and vice versa. For policy action, the best practice is to identify and review the resources that don't comply with the policy rules first, and then you can enable auto remediation to fix non-compliant resources. Firewall Manager will not apply Shield Advanced Protections to any resource. It will report on the compliance of resources only. We will come back to this policy later. We are going to include all the accounts under the organization. However, you could choose to select specific accounts and organizational units. We will select CloudFront as a resource type and we're going to include all resources that match the selected resource type. Firewall Manager gives you the option of only including resources that match specific tag, and you can include the tags here. For now, we will include all resources, and we're going to click Next. We could add tags, and we're going to review and create the policy. Now it'll take a few minutes for the policy to propagate and for Firewall Manager to show us which accounts are in the non-compliant state. Okay, so now we can see that one of our accounts is in the non-compliant state. We can select the security policy and this will show us all of our accounts and their status. We can also click on each individual account and this will show us the specific resources that are non-compliant and the violation reason. Now let's remediate this and go back to the policy. And in policy details, we go to policy action and click edit. We select auto remediate any non-compliant resources and we click save. Again, it'll take a few minutes for the policy to propagate. Okay, so we can see that now we don't have any account in the non-compliant state. We can again click on the security policy. And this will show us all of our accounts and its status. So now let's create a new Shield Advanced policy for a regional service. Let's click Create Policy. And we're going to select the US East region. And we're going to select Shield Advanced and click Next. We're going to be protecting an Elastic IP, so we give this policy a name. Elastic Shield Advanced. And again, for policy action, we're going to identify the resources that are not complying with the policy, but we don't want to auto remediate. And we click next. We're going to include all the accounts under my AWS organization, but again, we could choose specific accounts or organizational units if we wanted to. For resource type, we're going to select Elastic IP. And we're going to include all resources that match the selected resource type. And we click Next. We could add a tag, but we're going to click Next. We review and create the policy. And again, this will take a few minutes to propagate. Okay, so now we see that we have two accounts in the non-compliant state. Again, we can click on the security policy and it'll show us all of the accounts and their status. We can also select the account and it will show us the specific resources and the violation reason. So let's go back to the policy and in policy details, let's edit policy action and select auto remediate any non-compliant resources and click save. Again, this will take a few minutes to propagate. Okay, so now we can see 
that we don't have any account in the non-compliant status. So we recommend that as part of setting up AWS Shield Advanced, you proactively provide the Shield response team with the needed authorization. Providing authorization ahead of time helps prevent mitigation delays in the event of an actual attack. So in this video, we talked about how Firewall Manager can help centralize Shield Advanced policies. We created a global security policy for CloudFront, and we also created a regional security policy to protect an elastic IP. Finally, we confirmed that our resources are being protected by Shield Advanced. Thank you, and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.